Hello! It is Wednesday and we are so excited for our fourth, fourth, <laughs> fourth IG Live of this week. We are chatting today with Karen, the owner of Soul Yoga Collective in South Dakota. So very excited to learn more about her studio. It is a donation-based studio, really making yoga accessible to her community. And there you are. All right, let's see. I'm gonna add you in. All right, here we go. <laughs> Thank you for teaching me how to tell time. I mean, but we learn something It happens. Every it's day. the whole being time zone challenge that gets confusing <laughs> quick. They're clearly a very challenge today. So thank you so much for rolling with it and for joining us still. Uh, I'm so excited to chat. You are actually our first studio in South Dakota. So that's very exciting to me cool. to always be expanding to new areas. So I wanted to just, can you introduce yourself sure. and tell us who sure. you are in your studio? Uh, my name is Karen. I founded this beautiful yoga community. It's, I think, going on 10 years now. I'm not great. I'm date challenged. I don't, <laughs> I'm not great at like um so it's been about 10 years i um started kind of dabbling in yoga when i turned 40 i had four kids and really just brought in some of the tools and noticed how Im impactful they were mm -hmm. and so then that kind of led into wanting some education got a training came back here to south dakota i did my training in costa rica um, and just started teaching donation-based classes because what i realized was that income can be a really big hurdle for some people getting into yoga, but it's really those people mm -hmm. that it's, it's essential to have these tools, you know, like the people who really are struggling, these are, yeah. these can be life-saving tools for them. So I really, and coming from a single income home for years, I was a stay at home mom. So I know, I knew yeah. about um, the lack of disposable income. So I just kicked yeah. it off as a donation based project and the community just wrapped their arms around it and it continues to grow and it's thriving and we have people who donate generously so that the people who are this you know the single mother the stay-at-home parent um the the college age student the retiree like nobody is turned away for lack of financial means like we find a way to keep them coming connected to the studio and to this community which is we're very community driven and community focused it's all about community here so um, yeah so that's a little bit about, about me wow. and how this place came to be i i love that and and you're it's so true because i mean i'm based in new york city born and raised here too so yoga classes you know and and i understand from a business endpoint it, they're, they can be very expensive. They can be upwards of $30 per class. And that is really a huge hindrance for people that might want to try an in-studio class. And I love that you have done this and created this and really made it accessible to people. So it's just such a beautiful thing that you're doing. And you've been open now 10 years. I mean, that's amazing. Congratulations. It's a team effort. I can't, you know, to say that this has... Um, Sure, I perhaps planted the seed and the idea and just tossed it there into the world to see what would happen. But the, um, yeah. the right instructors came, the people who show up here really have mm -hmm. their heart in it. And so it just keeps nourishing itself. It's this beautiful, you know, evolution that continues to grow and expand. So I'm every day that I come here and practice, whether I'm, you know, beside the students or teaching in front, I'm humbled over and over and it's just immensely grateful for the community because that is what keeps moving and breathing and alive and it's a gift to be a part of and have you noticed in the 10 years you've probably seen a lot of changes i mean the pandemic being one of them that was probably a huge what are some of the changes you noticed in your studio and your community has there been a response to different classes or different sort of, I noticed that you also have yoga for seniors as well. And you have a lot of these different offerings. What have you noticed that has changed? Um, I think years? people are becoming more willing to step out of the comfort zone a little bit mm -hmm. and try a studio class. You know, in the beginning, mm -hmm. our classes were smaller. And of course you, people come in and try it out and people who maybe have been practicing at home, you know, on YouTube, finally, 
they decide because mm -hmm. maybe a friend came. Um, so they're just seeming to be a little bit more willing to right. try it out. And I think that's the, the yoga world, you know, in general is expanding to being more of a mainstream kind of thing and not out on the fringes and this strange, mm -hmm. mysterious thing, you know? Um, and that's really, and that's really, I think, how we teach here. Um, it really is about like the human yeah. evolution, personal, personal growth, self awareness. We we focus on that, and mm -hmm. just we let our students know, like you practice where you need to practice. We've had people play in shavasana the entire class, mm -hmm. and that's that's fine. There's no expectation that. to keep up or a certain way. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I think that would be about it. Just our community seems willing to try something new. I love that. Do you remember your first yoga I class? I do. Um, was like? I didn't let myself go to a yoga class until I had 30 days of my own thing because I didn't want to do the whole, oh, it's fun and let me go get all the equipment and then be like, oh, I don't like this. So I didn't let myself do that. I, I did my own thing at home for, for a month. And then I joined a studio on their two week intro pass. Um, and, you know, I don't have vivid re memory of that. I, I'm pretty okay with like jumping into random things. I'm always the person like in the front row when there's a lecture happening, like I just wanna, I'm okay, you know, being right. like that. But yeah. for sure it was like, I don't really know like the etiquette and, you know, should I be talking? Should I be looking at the teacher? Can I talk to beside me? What's happening? <laughs> So of course there were just some yeah. little things like that and every studio is so different too so yeah. yeah absolutely absolutely and it's so funny because sometimes you talk to people and their first class they might not fall in love with it for their first class they might just be kind of wary and so i love that people go back and try it again and so i always encourage people to also maybe try a different studio or try it online because your first class shouldn't be an indicator of everything you know like try to just try it a few more times and so i'm always happy when i hear that people do that you know they go okay i tried it it was you know maybe the time slot was better or the teacher was different um so i'm always happy to hear people trying to get for sure you, know? <laughs> you might come to a class yeah. and it's just not your style the, the class itself just didn't hit yeah. you or the teacher wasn't a fit so um we're blessed here that we have just an incredible team of instructors who are absolutely like they come with their heart. They come for the community. You know, I've been in classes mm -hmm. where I feel a little invisible because the instructor, it seems to me, is really there for themselves. I feel kind of like, do you see me right, right. now? Because I do not. So I think that we do mm -hmm. a really good job here. Our, our, everyone on this team at really like they show up for the community. It's not like hot shit up here in front of the class. We look at you know, <laughs> right. they show up very humble, um, do their own things and being transparent yeah. with that, but not to the degree of um, making that then the student's problem in a way. That again is bringing it back to the, right. uh, being about themselves. So yeah, we just, we encourage our students to come at least twice a week. We follow up you know, with all of our new students. We, they mm -hmm. always get a personal text from someone on the team. Um, Hey, hey, thanks for yeah. coming. How did it go? What do you have to say? Give us feedback because yeah. we really want to know. We want to know if they left like yeah. that was terrible because, um, <laughs> but nine times out of 10, they, right. they're they very, they feel at home right away with us. So I'm super grateful about that. Yeah. Oh, good, good. If If someone came to you and said, I'm interested in opening my own yoga studio, what advice do you have? Yeah, I would say what would you say start to that small. I would say clear out your living room mm -hmm. and invite your friends and start there and then let that mm -hmm. let that organism grow itself and watch, you know, really be watching and keenly interested and open to the invitations that will start to come into your life. Um, so that's really how mm -hmm. I did it. I didn't I imagined myself as like the holder of this container and I was behind it and just kind of had my arms mm -hmm. out and like, oh, maybe it needs a little nudge this way or a little nudge this way. But never was I the, yeah. I'm gonna pull this thing and I'm gonna force this thing. It was very like I was being guided mm -hmm. and then saying yes to the right things and saying no to things that weren't in alignment. Right. And then it just, it grows like on its own. Wow. Have you noticed 
and especially since you've become a studio owner, your own personal practice changing over the years, like with less time and now you have kids and they're probably a little bit older. Like how has your personal practice evolved? Uh, I've been very years? careful with that. And actually my personal practice is exactly where I want it to be, but it's in the studio. So I don't do a lot at home in the way of a personal practice. I meditate mm -hmm. every month, but as far as the physical, mm -hmm. once in a while I'll feel the need to, you know, pull back and do my own thing at home. But um, I come mm -hmm. to many classes here every week, as do most of our instructors. Like they are in the student role a lot here. They come practice beside their mm -hmm. students and that's an enriching experience. And so for me, coming to class often is, um, is, the, is really good for me. Like I just I practice. So yeah, my practice has not dropped off. I know that that happens a lot once you start teaching yoga, where it's like, now you're, you know, you're yeah. teaching all this and you're just kind of burnt out and maybe a little bit over it. And then the first thing you go is your own practice. That's the thing you can ever yeah. let happen. Because if I'm not practicing, how do I know what I'm teaching? Like I, I'm disconnected with it. So right. um, our instructors here have a beautiful right. personal practice. It's usually in the studio so we can see and support mm -hmm. each other. And then they're doing their own things, of course, outside of the studio too. So key, super key to, um, you can tell too, if an instructor yeah. isn't in their own practice, it really comes across, so. Mm. And even as you mentioned earlier, even if that's just going to class and being in Shavasana the whole time, that's still a practice. That's still a commitment to, to your practice. So always like reminding ourselves, you know, that it can always look different ways and it's always, Oh Evolution, my gosh, just from one day to the right. next, it can look a different way. <laughs> Absolutely. That's the human experience and it plays out every day. Yeah. Yeah. And you're in your studio space right now. Can you turn the phone? Yeah, can is, we see a little bit of the, of the space? Yeah. Let's see if I know how to operate. There we go. Okay. So this is our, our larger oh, practice room. Um, we had, well, we we get 50 people in here and it's full, but our community Wow. See, uh, embraces that it can be you know kind of a challenge um, but we're getting 50 people in this room currently because it's winter time and everyone wants to be in the studio practicing so this is one of our practice spaces we have heaters so we have our heated classes in here those are far infrared heaters that warm the room up and then there's more there's more to see here so this is our lobby these are our wonderful oh helpers wow. here keeping the studio clean and beautiful so this is our lobby we we made sure when we designed this particular space that we had a, a nice area for people to sit and be with each other and connect so these this little uh seating arrangement gets used every day quite a lot check-in desk some healthy snacks thank you and then this is our our other studio space it's a smaller room and this is where we have our hot classes and again the same heat panels but it's smaller we pack in the bodies and we get over a hundred so we can you know have that hot yoga experience wow. here yeah and then, yeah go ahead and you've been at this same physical same. location the whole time um no we started downtown rapid city so it's just a, i don't know not even a mile from here um yeah. And we were there for about seven years. And here's a little, just one kitchen area. We provide hot tea and people hang out and have their tea. There we go. Yeah, it's Love pretty it. wonderful. So no, we, we came here, interesting story. Uh, we were downtown and it was an upstairs location, beautiful location, like hardwood floors and really tall ceilings and yeah. In the, in the heart, in the, the hustle and bustle of Rapid City. And we were growing a lot. And a friend um, yeah. bought this building and really asked if I would want to come over and, and open a second location. And so I, I kind of let that, I, I didn't want to really look at that too much because that's a whole other beast, right? Two locations. And she was persistent. <laughs> yeah. I was like, all right, let's, let's go yeah. for it because the perk here was that we didn't have stairs to contend with we had stairs downtown and the parking was kind of becoming a hassle mm -hmm. and so I was like let's give it a go okay mm -hmm. two locations let's go for it so we opened this right. second location in January of 2020 oh <laughs> no yes and
and it went well for you know the oh. first month yeah and then <laughs> suddenly everything happened right um, but we held on to both locations until the end of august of that year and then i made a decision and it was yeah um i was so emotionally connected to the space downtown because i it was proven like the business was oh. running well i knew i knew that it was successful wow. there and to um make the leap and I had to decide which, which one am I going to close. So I closed the downtown. Oh, oh my, that's a terrible decision to have to make. It's like, which of your am I going to push off this cliff right now? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, but it, it was the right call because, it, you know, the parking is so much better here and there's, there aren't stairs, so we can have all yeah. ability levels. Everything is, you know, nice wide doors to accommodate wheelchairs or whatever we need to yeah. have here. So it was the right decision. It was, you know, it for me for a moment but then the final time that I left that space and shut the door and walked away then it was like full focus on on this yeah yeah how do you personally and I always ask this because I'm curious for my own personal self when you're faced with a decision like that that's a that's a big decision what is the first step that you take you're like I, I know I have this huge decision to make it how how do you approach Approach that decision, it's especially as a yoga teacher and as a yogi. What is the first step oh my you goodness. take? I think the first step you take is getting really quiet and listening. Yeah. Like oftentimes we know yeah. the truth. We really do the best thing to do is. Mm -hmm. And if we trust that little quiet yeah. whisper inside yeah. and move from there, um, it gets to be yeah. a slippery slope yeah. when we start to ask other people, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Do you think? Um, if you're for validation it's yeah. like that's a pretty clear signal you need to get quiet again and so you know i journal a lot right. like i'll try to write and write and write until suddenly the answer kind of just appears on the page um, but mostly like we know we yeah. always know especially when it's the big hard things we really do know so I that that was right. i knew it was a risk um thankfully okay jumping in i'm a risk yeah. taker um a doing that and so yeah. it's here's a big piece for me when I'm coming up against a big decision, I down the mm -hmm. worst case scenario road. So if, if I say, okay, if mm -hmm. I do this, and I try to go to the worst right. case scenario, well, this could happen. And if that happened, then what? Like right. the worst case scenario. And right. then can I live with that? And usually it's like, yeah, yes, I can. So mm -hmm. going forward. Yeah. yeah. And I I love that too because it's worst case scenario but in a constructive format you know so it's not like worst case scenario panic <laughs> it's like worst case scenario okay can handle the worst case scenario and nine times out of ten these are life or death situations and we can handle just about anything and i mean to be honest there probably there was no wrong decision right so you really didn't it was they both would have been amazing choices, but there was something in you, who knows what it was, that just led you to just keeping that second location. And, and it yes. was obviously a great yes. choice to I make. Think we've, um, yeah, I think we really opened up. The, the location was great and the accessibility was better. Even thinking of parking, you go downtown yeah. and you're circling the block times and now, mm. oh, I gave myself 10 minutes to get to yoga. Now I don't have a spot. Now I'm gonna be late. I don't want people coming in right. here under that state of you know. um, right. yeah so it's it's been really yeah. good and people followed you know i wasn't worried that oh they're gonna yeah. they love the building it's like no they're not here <laughs> for the people and so yeah, yeah so the people followed yeah. and and they yeah keep coming so i love that anything else coming up in the future that you're excited about would you maybe consider expanding again in the future or are there any retreats or uh, we also that have you want to share fun cool things going on here we have sound baths and everything's on our schedule mm -hmm. in the way of um, special events and things like that i do you know i have considered an expansion in some way i don't know how that looks or um clearly i would need more you know i don't want to do it myself <laughs> so like how mm -hmm. do i uplift people and delegate and partner up and things like that um i am homeschooling my daughter and i have three old so yeah i just want to be mindful with how i'm arranging my life um, but perhaps yeah. you know perhaps an expansion I, lo I love creating things i love building i love 
going to the next level and what's next. I'm yeah. constantly on the search for what's next for me personally and this community. Um, so who knows? Who knows? I'm, I'm open and listening and watching, and then, I, and then I'll let the universe guide me. Um, as far as events coming up, I, I do take a, a group from the studio to Costa Rica every year. Um, yeah, yeah, it's oh, one, we've done that for four cool. years now. And it's really not a yoga retreat. It's more like a Costa Rica experience. We do yoga, we do yoga every day, but that's not yeah. the focus. The focus is like, let's hang out together in this beautiful piece of paradise and get to know each other, experience this culture mm -hmm. and, um, and just hang out and, and deepen our connection as a community. So I take a small group every year. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's a thing that just happens. I've been to Costa Rica times, so it's like, I wanna show them like, hey you, Hey friends, come and hang out in, in this my my other place. Come hang yeah. out with me. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, there's yeah. always there's always things like that going on. Yeah, I love that, Karen. Thank you so much for joining us today and your patience I'm with my time issues. And thank you for supporting us. Uh, it's only because of studio partners like you that we can print magazines. So thank you for being a part of this. And when the issue comes out in June, we will be sending them to your studio and hopefully they'll be in that beautiful coffee table area and people can read it and lounge around and drink yes. some tea. <laughs> yes. So thank you so much. I'm going to save this onto YouTube so people can watch it later okay. as well and we can play it back again. Yes, take care. Thank you so much, Bye. Karen. Bye.